The elite 47th mechanized brigade of the Ukrainian armed forces, which spent 15 months continuously fighting in many of the bloodiest battles with the Russians in the east and went into a well-deserved rest and recharge in early September, may have the most sophisticated American Abrams tanks. The unit's lone tank battalion was equipped with the American-made M1A1 Situational Awareness Abrams from the 2000s, which are not the most protected, but the Ukrainian vehicles may be the most modified, Forbes writes, citing a video in which the 47th Brigade showed off surviving vehicles during exercises the 69-ton four-seater M1s sport American-made reactive armor blocks on their sides and Ukrainian-made reactive armor blocks on their turrets as locally made slat armor against drone and drone grounding jammers. Journalists noted that the improvements are designed to combat two main threats, anti-tank missiles and explosive drones. Reactive armor explodes outward, deflecting missile warheads. Cellular armor and a suppressor disable and block explosive drones. The article emphasizes, it is not known how many Abrams tanks the 47th Brigade had left after the fighting. At most, the 47th Mechanized Brigade has 25 M1s left. At a minimum, it might have just 17, but it's a safe bet all the survivors now have the add-on armor and jammers. They'll roll back into battle better protected than ever, potentially delaying the day when the Brigade has too few tanks to form a cohesive fighting force. If the 47th Mechanized Brigade gets more Abrams, they might not come from the United States, but from Australia. While the Americans haven't signaled a willingness to transfer more tanks, the Australians are reportedly considering donating 59 surplus M1A1SAs that recently retired from the Australian Army. With 59 fresh Abrams, the 47th Mechanized could replenish its existing tank battalion and possibly form a second battalion too. Unless and until that happens, those 14 to 25 survivors of the original 31 Ukrainian M1s will have to soldier on alone, Forbes said. According to Oryx analysts, six such tanks were destroyed and eight were damaged or abandoned. It is strange that the United States has not sent an M1 replacement. Those first 31 Abrams that arrived in Ukraine a year ago are the only Abrams that the Americans have promised, despite the fact that there are literally thousands of tanks in storage in the United States, the article says. Ukraine's main intelligence directorate has stated that it carried out an operation to destroy Russian Baltic fleet minesweeper Alexander Obakov, the agency reported on Monday. The ship was based in the city of Baltiysk in Kaliningrad region and was supposed to go on combat duty. Due to the mysterious appearance of a hole in the gas duct, water got into the engine, the main intelligence directorate revealed in a statement and published a video of the engine inspection. According to agency, the minesweeper's repair will be technically complex and expensive. There have been no official reports from Russia regarding the problems with Obakov. This was the second case of Ukraine sabotaging a Russian warship in the exclave, which lies between Poland and Lithuania some 400 kilometers from Ukraine's northwestern border. Производится разборка главного двигателя по причине попадания воды внутрь двигателя. Была, раз... Была разобрана турбина, снят компенсатор, идет поиск отверстия, через которое поступала вода внутрь.
29 сентября 2024 года, город Балтийск, тральщик Александр Обух. The war in Ukraine could end with agreements that Kiev will receive strong security guarantees, while Moscow will retain de facto, but not de jure, control over the occupied territory. Such a scenario is increasingly being discussed not only by Western, but also by Ukrainian officials, writes the Financial Times. The publication notes that neither Kiev nor its allies agree to recognize Russia's sovereignty over the occupied territories, since this would only contribute to further Russian aggression and seriously undermine international law and order. Instead, it assumes tacit agreement that these lands will have to be returned somehow in the future through diplomatic means. Giving up land to gain NATO membership may be the only game in town, as one Western diplomat told us, but for Ukrainians it remains taboo, at least publicly, the Financial Times writes. As the publication notes, foreign policy circles have been discussing the West German model for Ukraine for a year and a half. West Germany was in NATO since 1955, although East Germany remained under Moscow's control until 1989. The model as an option for Ukraine was mentioned in particular by former U.S. Special Representative to Ukraine Kurt Volker, former NATO Secretary General Anders Fogh Rasmussen and current President of the Czech Republic Petra Pavel. I don't think that full restoration of control over the entire territory is a prerequisite. If there is demarcation, even an administrative border, then we can consider it temporary and accept Ukraine into NATO on the territory that it will control by that time, Pavel recently said in an interview with a Czech newspaper. Recently, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that at the 25th meeting of Ramstein on October the 12th, they will present a plan for victory to all partners. We are preparing for Ramstein on October the 12th. This will be the 25th meeting, but the first at the level of leaders. We will present a plan for victory, clear, concrete steps for a just end to the war, he noted. According to him, the determination of partners and the strengthening of Ukraine are what can stop Russian aggression. Let us recall that recently, the representative of the U.S. State Department, Matthew Miller, stated that the states believes that the plan for victory presented by Ukraine contains productive steps. We received this plan. We looked at it. We saw it in a number of productive steps. However, according to Miller, the U.S. will refrain from discussing this plan for now since Ukraine has not disclosed its details publicly.